think about the best youtube video presentation or speech you've ever seen what made it so impressive hello world prof mike green here in this video i'm going to start off a series called kick-ass presentations how to build and create presentations that people are going to be excited to watch while they're there to see you present here's the game plan in this video, we're going to focus mostly on some things that are the wrong way to build presentations. And then we're going to move into the kick-ass way, the right way to build exciting presentations that people are going to watch. As always, there's Q&A at the end, or you can contact me in the comments below if you want to ask a specific question. One of the most important things, uh, one of the things I see done the most often is people overcrowd their, their slides, whether that's with bullets, uh, wordy content, whether that's with poor visuals that are, um, you know, there's just too much going on. Overcrowding will absolutely kill your presentations. Never do it. This leads right into, you know, just ineffective visuals in general. Poor Bill here, he's trying to explain this Microsoft Live platform. Um, who knows what's going on? We've got, looks like four tiers, three or four columns. This is just completely ineffective. Now, since we're not seeing the presentation live, maybe this isn't you know, a good example. Maybe what Bill did is he started with that top row of clouds and then he used animation and he brought this in piece by piece. That's a great way to help build up complex visuals, uh, starting them piece by piece using animation to slowly add to the content. But just showing something like this to the visitor is very ineffective. It's overwhelming and it's overcrowded. This is super important. Do not read your slides. People can read a lot faster than you can talk, uh, which translates into you wasting a lot of their time. Enough said. Absolutely no winging it, okay? It depends on how big the presentation is. How important is this to you? You know, this is a, this is a 100 level presentation in college. Okay, yeah, maybe I won't practice that much. Maybe this is for a job interview. Maybe this is something you've got to give to the board of directors of your organization. That is important to you professionally, personally. You can't just walk in there and wing it. You need to spend the time practicing, making sure that your slideshow and your presentation is exactly as you want it and know exactly what you want to say. Now, of course, I'm not following my own rule here. Don't sit down. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting down in my chair because I'm working on my computer, but if you're presenting in front of a group of people, if at all possible, you want to stand. Now, sometimes you are asked to give a panel presentation. Uh, a lot of times those are seated and that's customary. But if you're giving a, you know, what, I, what I'll call a conference lecture, something along those lines, think about your college professors. You don't want to sit down. It's just not um, as professional. You want to stand. I, personally, it frees me up to walk around. I'm a big walker when I'm presenting, but some people like to stay behind the lectern and you want to stand there. Dress appropriately. Uh, you have to know your audience. Uh, is this a job interview where suit's a requirement? Okay, suit is the bare minimum. You want to you know, show off a nice tie, pocket square, something like that. Cufflinks, great, go above and beyond. Uh, is this for a group of people who are college kids, it's during the summer, they're going to be wearing shorts and a t-shirt. If you walk up in a suit, uh, it's probably the wrong attire for that audience. The rule of thumb, always be one step above your audience. So you need to know where they're at. Is that business casual? Khakis? Polo? Okay, maybe I'll wear a button down in khakis. One step above where your audience is dressed. Another piece with this, go ahead and give yourself a shave, groom yourself, do your hair, do your makeup, whatever it is. You want to look good when you present. Okay, people are there to see you, not the presentation. So this isn't necessarily about your presentation itself. It's in the background. You want to be the shining star and you want to put your best foot forward. Be careful when during the day you're presenting. This is in two areas, uh, bathroom breaks. After everyone's had that first or second cup of coffee in the morning, nature calls. You need to be aware of that. Right after lunch, same thing. Speaking of lunch, always be aware of where the meals are compared to your time of presentation. Right after breakfast is great. People are energized in the morning. Great time to present. Right before lunch, uh, people are hungry. 
they're going to be really difficult to captivate them when they're smelling good food and uh, and they're trying to listen to you at the same time two o'clock right after lunch you know people are full they're digesting a lot of times this is a lull in the day if people don't have coffee if you're not energetic exciting it's going to be tough to keep their attention be aware of the time of day very important boa enough said right no of course not beware of acronyms it might be uh, absolutely part of your language you use every day don't assume that of your audience uh, if acronyms always spell out on the slide the first time you use them and say them alongside with it afterwards then you can feel free to use the acronym don't be boring uh, this is tough this is where practice comes in this is where you want to try to interject some stories uh, if you're comfortable with it try to interject some uh, laughs some jokes you want to do your best not to be boring this is obvious but you know your presentation can help you with that uh, funny visuals uh, videos lots of tools even animation if it's used appropriately don't overdo it but uh, there are tools that you can use in your presentations to help you not be boring and this one is tough again it depends on your audience be aware of cultural barriers I've got a link here to a hilarious video uh, from Catherine Tate the offensive translator go watch that uh, it's it's absolutely hilarious and it shows exactly what I mean if you're speaking to a multinational audience uh, this is key you need to know what offends people in their culture and you want to be sure not to show that on your slide not to say that not to wear that whatever thanks for watching I'm Prof Mike Green do you see what I'm doing here you want to be sure to include all the contact info that you're comfortable with don't want to put your cell phone out there on YouTube totally understandable don't do it don't want to put your email out there fine what are you comfortable sharing with people as you uh, become uh, you know move on from being a student into a professional you want to create you know a professional username for yourself I'm Prof Mike Green everywhere Facebook Twitter Google Plus LinkedIn whatever if I'm on a platform and I want you to find me I use that same handle and then I'm comfortable sharing that wherever I'm at because that's my professional persona and I'm happy to uh, invite people to connect with me professionally on these platforms back to my original question think back to a video presentation speech that you saw and were just whoa blown away what about that was impactful what about that made it a kick-ass presentation comment below and thanks for watching